Okay, great. So again, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Why don't you go ahead and start by telling us a little bit about yourself? I was born in Jackson, Mississippi and and raised there. I'm the youngest of four children and um, I attended the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss Rebels. Um, And I was a music major. I was a vocal performance major and I sang classical music and, and operatic music. And, and from that, I realized that I was probably never going to make it as a professional singer. Um, um, although I love to sing, I just didn't think that I had that, that unique special thing that was going to help me to make it as, as a solo artist. So I, um, talked my parents into letting me move to um, LA to go to summer school at UCLA with the secret intention of taking acting classes and trying to break into TV and film. Um, Since I didn't know anybody in the business and had no connections, I was really nervous about telling anybody that that was my intention. Um, I loved performing. I did musicals, but I'd never done any quote unquote, straight acting and, and theatrical acting. So um, my parents said, yes, let me go to summer school at UCLA. And, um, and I started studying immediately with an acting coach there. And um, at the end of the summer, I called my parents and said, I can't come home. You'll kill my soul. I was a little dramatic. Um, and I stayed and studied religiously, studied, I never missed acting class. I waited tables and I spent every penny on my acting training. I also took voice lessons and, um, and lucky for me, I happened to, um, I was working at a Mexican restaurant and I happened to wait on a woman who was a a manager with a, a pretty, um, prestigious company and her husband, who was a producer. Of course, I had no idea who they were. And um, so I I waited on them and um, I'm chatting with this couple and she tells me it's her birthday. So I send her a free dessert for birthday for her birthday. And at the end of the meal, she's like, she asked me if I was an actress. And I said, yes, everybody in LA who waits tables is an actress. And um, she gave me her card. She said, listen, I want you to call me and come see me. And, um, uh, you know, the rest is history. I signed with her. And three months later, I was auditioning for Northern Exposure, got cast in my first pilot season. Um, I had been in LA for three years, so it wasn't automatic. I had been studying and and doing commercials and things. But um, this was the first time the first, you know, for those of you who don't know, pilot season is like a, it used to be, it's totally changed with streaming, but it used to be like a three or four month period um, from February to about um, April, May, where all the new pilots cast their um, talent. And so I went through my first pilot season, it was April, and I thought I was going to get dropped by the agent that she got me. And um, uh, luckily they sent me in on Northern Exposure. Anyway, so I went to this audition for Northern Exposure, which I had probably auditioned for about 30 or 40 pilots by this point, and I thought my agent would drop me, and um, and the role of Shelley Tambo was, at that time, a Native American, and, um, and I looked at it, and I was like, you know, there's no way I'm going to get cast in this role. And, but I'm going anyway, because I don't want to tell my agent no. So I went and, and I, I walked into the casting director's office at Universal Studios and I was kind of like, um, you know, I know I'm probably not right for this. I'm not Native American. And she said, oh, the role's changed. We've, we've reimagined it and um, you're perfect. Don't worry. And and so I auditioned and, and in a matter of about three days, I had, I think, five auditions where they, um, each time there were more and more decision makers in the room. And so finally I got to what they call network. Um, I'm aging myself because I don't, you know, 
network TV still does it like this, but streaming doesn't. But I got to network, and which is a pretty int- intimidating experience. It, it was in the basement of CBS Studios. And um, there's no windows and there's an auditorium and you sit there in these little metal chairs in a hallway next to your competition. So, oh yeah, there was, and I remember John Corbett was there, John Cullum was there, Darren Burroughs were there. So each of the characters were there with their competition and, um, and they call your name and you go in and, and, and there's, 30 people sitting in the room of, of executives and, and you, you, you have a scene that you've been rehearsing and memorized and you do your scene with a reading with a casting director. I did it. I left. I felt like, okay, that went pretty well. I did what I wanted. Um, and then I didn't hear anything for three days and went back to my waiting tables job and thought, well, okay, um, I'm not going to get it. And, and then I got a call from my my manager who said, you know, you you got the role, and which I was, you know, ecstatic and excited. And she said, there, um, it's shooting in Seattle, Washington. I'd never been to the Pacific Northwest, and I was like, oh, okay. And she said, it's it, you, you're picked up for eight episodes, so you'll be there for three months. And I was like, okay. And um, <laughs> uh. And I moved and they actually moved me. And I, I literally just fell in love with the area. It is so beautiful and gorgeous. I'm still here. I'm literally sitting in my living room, looking out and I live on a lake and um, I'm looking at the water right now. And, um, and I, you know, I see eagles sitting in the trees, Um, but it's, it's really a gorgeous place. And I, I just feel so lucky and fortunate that I was, I was a moved out of Hollywood because it was, um, we, we were, you know, kind of sequestered up here and cloistered. So when doing that show, we just focused on the work. We didn't have a lot of, uh, paparazzi and, and, and we had no idea actually when the show became a hit, we didn't know really until, you know, people started asking for interviews and things like that. And I remember um, when I got nominated for an Emmy and um, they called me from the set and um, it was like four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock. It seemed like it because I was asleep. And um, and one of the the PAs on the show called and they were like, Cynthia, you're nominated for an Emmy. And I was like, what are you talking about? I didn't even, I didn't even know when the Emmys were, or I didn't put myself up for an Emmy and the, the show had nominated all the cast, but I didn't even, wasn't even aware of it. And I never really watched the Emmy. I mean, sort of, but I didn't watch them all that much. And so I was like, well, when is it? Um, and, you know, and the rest it is kind of history. I mean, you know, I, I was nominated a few times. The show was nominated. We, it was a really, you know, life changing, fantastic experience. And, um, and I seriously considered. I, I had some some other um, opportunities to move back to LA, and, and it was kind of a a really big decision for me, but, but I, um, wanted to stay in the Northwest. I, um, had a boyfriend who I married and, um, and we wanted to start a family and raise children. And I just felt like, you know, for me, raising children outside of LA was the right call. And, um, and I'm really glad I did it. My, I, you know, I've, absolutely loved my life here. I have just this amazing group of friends and support group. And, um, and while I kept working and and doing other jobs and, um, uh, while I was doing over exposure, I did the movie eight seconds with Luke Perry and, um, to grandmother's house we go with the Olsen twins, which reruns every year. That's the one 
I want to talk about because that's one of my okay, favorite right. Mary Kay and Ashley movies. <laughs> oh, ask, ask me. It's funny because I have, I have, you know, the, I have different sets of fans and I can tell which group they're in, you know, like my kids friends were the Mary Kate and Ashley fans. And so they know me from that. I have, you know, all the, the rodeo and horseback riding people and things like that are eight seconds fans and, and Northern exposure fans, you know, are, are very diverse and, and global. I've been blown away with the, they still have a reunion um, every year with, I think we did our 30 year reunion and, um, and people come from all over the world. So that's been kind of crazy. And their kids are watching, you know, well, it's not streaming right now, but their kids have seen it and watch on DVD. But let's talk about, about what you like. Mary Kate. Oh, and Mary Ashley. Kate yes. I'm a millennial. Mary Kate and Ashley were my idols growing up. So that yeah. I always say that's one of the most underappreciated Olsen twin movies. Cause I swear every time I bring it up, no one knows what it is. Oh, and I'm like, what do you mean? It's the best Christmas movie ever. I watch it every Christmas time. So when I saw your name, I was like, that name looks so familiar. And it was bugging me. I was like, no, no, I got to Google her. Cause I've seen this name before. And right away I was like, she's the mom. Like she's the Olsen I'm twins mom. mom. I'm Mary Kate and Ashley's mom. That's one of my claims to fame. I mean, my <laughs> kids think that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, it is. It's really it was. cool. It was their first movie and they were both like six years old. And the, I have a funny story about that one. So um, when we came to shoot, Mary Kate had this huge black eye and she had been like playing hide and seek and crawled under a bush and got a stick stuck in her eye. And so we had to shoot all of the, Ashley shot a lot of the stuff, you know, if, if there weren't two of them in the scene, Ashley would, would shoot, um, you know, for both of them. And then they shot everything that I said to them. I shot to like, um, to an, you know, they would put a, it's called a C stand. It's a metal post for me to look at. And that would be them. And the script supervisor who was in her fifties would read their lines. And I would just talk to this post, um, as, as, as if I was talking to them because we had to condense the time that they were on the set, a, because they were young and B because Mary, we had to wait for Mary Kay's eye to heal. Um, so, That's crazy. Yeah. Was that your first, uh, and I'm so sorry, I don't think I've seen um, Northern Exposure. So was that your first time working with kids? Um, yeah. Well, in Northern Exposure, I actually, that I actually, okay, no, because in Northern Exposure, I had a baby. Um, yeah. Um, not a re- I mean, it wasn't my baby, but my character had a baby. And um, so I got to, you know, it was actually super cool. Cause I, I had these twins that were, they, when you work with babies on film, they usually cast twins because they can only be on the set for, you know, a short period of time. And then they, if one's not happy, they're hopeful that the other one is. And um, so, yeah, I got to work with twins on Northern Exposure, but, um, but they were babies. So they didn't have dialogue. So I didn't get to talk to them. I mean, for, it was, I love working with Mary Kate and Ashley. It's kind of funny because they always tell you, you know, not to work kids and, and animals, kids and dogs, you know, they, they steal the show and nobody looks at you, but I, I, I always look at acting as, as a, um, you know, as a team effort. And I also come from, uh, you know, more of a theater background and, and I love theater and I do theater. So to me, if, if all the pieces are working together and we make a great piece of art or entertainment or, or theater, um, that's the important thing. And, you know, it, it, and almost to the point where, you know, I hope that people do see it as a whole and they're not just looking at me. It's so great hearing about like your history and now, you know, I'm a fan. So go ahead and tell me about like your new series that you're on a bit about your character and just kind of like what drew you to this role. Okay. Um, well, um, this show and this role, um, going home and my role, Charlie Copeland is, I just couldn't have even 
imagined how great it would be, how great the experience would be in on every single level. Um, I feel so lucky that they asked me to audition for this. And um, it was kind of, you know, I, I, I just things happen for a reason. And I feel like I was at this perfect right place in my life right then. I was, when I got asked to audition for, for the role of Charlie, I was in the middle of doing a two person play in, in Seattle and, um, really, um, just, I, I was on stage for an hour and a half. I played a geneticist. I had a ton of dialogue. It was just a very, um, intense and, um, challenging role. And I feel like, that kind of prepped me for playing the lead in this show because I do have a lot of monologues, a lot of dialogue, and we shoot really fast. And um, although it's a show that's really character-based and about dialogue, we move fast and there wasn't a lot of downtime. And, and uh, you know, for those who don't know the business, when you're shooting movies and a lot of times, you spend hours sitting in your trailer waiting and, and you have a lot of time to review your lines. And that wasn't the case on this show. You really had to come in prepared. And, and, and luckily I was in that mind frame and, and I, and I was, and I, it was just a, it was a gift. I, the show is, is about a hospice and um, it, it's based on a real hospice, Spokane hospice um, in Washington state. And I was fortunate enough to get to go there before, prior to shooting and, and talk to the nurses and the people who work there and, and read these guest books, um, people whose family members have passed on who they write in guest books and they write about their experience. And personally, I had no experience with hospice. I, um, I knock on wood, haven't, experienced a lot of death. My parents are both alive. They're in their nineties. Um, yeah. So, so for me, the whole thing was new, but I was just so impressed and blown away with the people that worked there. They're there. I mean, it's a calling for sure. The, the nurses that work there and they, they see their role as, as, providing the families, um, both the people that are, that are passing on and all their loved ones with, uh, good, they call it a good death. And, and what they mean by that is, is just providing a place where they can have a peaceful, beautiful transition to what's next. And, um, um, and they really, really do. And I think our show creator, Dan Merchant, did such an incredible job capturing these stories. It's um, uh, all the episodes are based on stories that that he people told them from his personal experience, from the nurses um, of of things that really happen in hospice and um the, it's just, it's really moving and it's giving me a new perspective on, on the whole process of dying. I mean, it, it really doesn't have to be, you know, a sad, depressing event. I mean, it, it really can be cathartic and beautiful as, you know, people have the opportunity to resolve issues and, 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 you know, just get closure with, and I think it's a, it's a gift to the family members. I mean, as much as, as to the person that's passing away, it, it's, you know, their family is able to say goodbye in a really lovely, peaceful way. And, um, and if there are things that need to be resolved, they, they have that opportunity and the nurses, they're facilitated. I mean, it's really incredible. They just know the right questions to ask and when to be, in the room and when to be present and when not to. I One of the really um, interesting things that I've heard a couple of times now about hospice and the nurses there is that um, 
that sometimes people who are um, who are close to death um, they they hang on for a long time because their families don't want to leave the room and and the whole family is there and they wait and they wait and finally the nurse will come in and say hey you know you guys want to I'm going to go to the lounge and have a cup of coffee or, or, or just take a break. I'll stay here. I'll, I'll, I'll watch for you and, and I'll call you. And, and I think it's, it's not uncommon where they will, the family will leave and the person will go and pass on because they don't want to die in front of their loved ones. They don't want them to have that memory. And, um, it's just really moving. Um, the role of Charlie was just challenge, really challenging, and I learned so much. And I just I, I can't say enough about our our show creator Dan Merchant. He directed most of the of these first episodes, and um, just a. a really incredible crew. Um, um, you know, I don't think anybody was ever uh, uptight or cross or, you know, which is kind of, if they were, I'm sure they were cause we were working fast, but, um, but you didn't feel it. I mean, they really made it such a nice environment because these were intense scenes and a lot of, I mean, it really, um, uh, emotional scenes and and I think they made an environment where everybody felt safe and comfortable to do their work and and I I love the fact that our our producers um, have a policy that we did not shoot more than ten hour days because they wanted to respect the crews that they have families and they have lives outside of of this job and. Um, and they stuck to that. And ten hours might sound long to a lot of people, but but in the film world, that's very civilized. I mean, you actually get to go home to your family. We we never shot past seven p.m. Um, and so people get to go home and see their children and 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 live their lives, which I I think is 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 the way to do it. I mean, it makes sense. I it. So many times, uh, in fact, on most of the productions I've worked on, um, you know, you just, they don't do that. I mean, sometimes you can. I mean, if you're shooting at night, obviously you can't, you have to work at night. And, um, but a lot of times it's 14, 15 hour days and it's so intense that, you know, especially the crew who is there 24 seven, um, really it's hard to have a life outside of this. And, um, and I, I'm really grateful and, and think it, you know, respect our producers for making those, those commitments to the, to the crew. And, um, um, I, I really so hope we get to come back and do more. It's, it was just a really a fantastic experience. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's such a different point of view show too. You know, we've seen yeah. hospital shows, doctor shows, but we've never seen something that focus that a lot of people do experience. And so I, I feel like it'll hit home with a lot of families. Well, I mean, it is universal. We're all going, going to die. I mean, it's something that everybody in the world is going to have to go through. And it's just a matter of how do you go through it? It's really, it's funny. I just, I talked to a friend today, kind of out of the blue, it had nothing to do with my show, who was going to visit someone in hospice. and um, and. He mentioned that the fam that the person in the hospice, the family hadn't told them. I mean, they were they were on drugs and and you know to help the pain and and the family hadn't told them that yeah he is this person is dying and is going to leave and I and I said to them I said really because I think you know maybe they should rethink that because it's an opportunity. Uh, for them, for closure, for the family, for anything that, you know, I think I would want to, and, and now having been through this experience in this show, I think it's a gift to know that, that you only have a little, a finite amount of time. And this is your opportunity to make peace 
and and to to say goodbye to your loved ones in a really beautiful healthy way and um I I haven't seen anything like it on yeah. television. No, same. Yeah, I I haven't seen anything like it and I think it just shares a really a powerful message. Um, which kind of leads me to my next question. What are you most excited about for people to see from the series? Well, I, I mean, really what we just yeah, spoke about. That's kind of what I, I thought. <laughs> I hope I hope it changes people's perspective on death. I hope that that they I really hope people go away, come away from this show feeling uplifted and positive. I know that, you know, when, when you say, oh, it's a show about hospice and everybody and, you know, the guest star typically dies um, at the end of the show. I won't give anything away, but um, but it is a positive show. I mean, the message in the show is positive, And I I feel like that hopefully people will watch and, and see that it, it's not a downer. Right. Yeah, no, um, I get what you mean by that. Like it's, it's sad, but it has a message. Right, right. And I, I really feel like a lot. If the the episodes are positive, I mean, most of the episodes we end the show and um, it, with me and doing, um, uh, I'm I'm talking to God, who's my buddy, um, who helps me. Yeah, and and I I really love the way that they structured sh- structured the show and that Dan wrote it because um, again you know that's just my character's way of 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 dealing with you know my what I have to do as in my work every day and and the heaviness of that and then I go talk to my buddy and and about it and. And I I love the just the intimacy and that it's it it just really feels real. They don't make it, um, you know. I'm I'm not talking to this. It, it's not so. Uh, I I wish I'm searching for the word, but formal. Um, and I I like that. It's just it's just it's my way of dealing and my character's way of. Of and and God is my my buddy and my friend. Yeah, no, I love that. And I mean, it's almost like you're reading my mind. But the next question is, how does faith impact your work? Whether it was with this role, um, any job you take on, how, yeah, like how do you incorporate your faith into your everyday work life? Well, I mean, first, I'm I'm an actress, so I I would you know it would be disingenuous for me to say that, that I'm, that I judge roles based on, you know, the message that they're sending. I mean, I, I, I try to, there's a lot of things that go into, you know, why I choose a role and, 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 um, you know, is it well-written? Is the character a full and complete character? Is it something that's going to challenge me? And, you know, sometimes it's, it's just a job. Um, cause that's my job. And, and, you know, you, when an opportunity comes, you take it and, um, cause it leads to the next thing. But, um, I, I would say as far as, uh, you know, I, as, as faith, I feel like everything that co- crosses your path is there for a reason and, and you, and you can grow from, I mean, both good and bad. I mean, I, I think I've probably learned more from the hard, challenging things in my life than maybe, you know, when things are easy and great. But, um, so I would say that, you know, I, I approach everything with, with the belief and faith that I'm going, it's going to be good. And then I'm going to, to as long as I do my best and, and, um, and I, you know, give it my all and, and, and come into it with a good attitude that, that something positive is going to come from that. Yeah, definitely. I think that's how most people should think, which is like every day, you know, like wake up and just be like the 
best version of yourself. I know that's so much easier said than done. Though. Oh, it is. It's easier said than done, but I certainly try. I, I you know, I try to keep that in mind. And and uh, my friends call me the yes, the yes girl, because um, I. I, I say yes. I try to say yes a lot, you know, whether that be to to work experiences, to to, you know, new try new things, travel. To, yes, with my kids, I try hard. I think it was Shonda Rhimes who wrote the, you know, that article about the, the year of yes. Um, and and I do because I. I really try to say, okay, why is this opportunity presenting itself? And, you know, I try not to say no because, oh, I'm too busy or, oh, it's going to change. You know, how could I do that? A lot of times it's really easy to say, well, how am I going to do that show? It shoots in Spokane and I live in five hours away and my daughter's in high school and how... How's that going to work? And if I go down that path, I would have said no, but it did work. Everything worked out beautifully. I have, a, you know, I, it just, all the pieces fell together. And, and I guess that's what I mean. I think I, I, I try to, to just um, look at things from the perspective of, okay, this is, a, you know, I'm being presented this and why, you know, what, where's the good in it? What can I, what can I get out of it? And um, um, yeah. And, and then I would also say just, you know, um, again, easier said than, than done, but trying to live in the now and not overthink every, every little bit of it, but just go, okay. Like, like you said, you know, wake up and make this I've been given this great this day. You know, how am I going to make it great? Yeah, definitely. And what has this role taught you or what are some things that you have in common with your character? Um oh wow. I well again, I've I feel I, I, it might sound like a broken record, but it's taught me so much about about the way I feel about death and um and hospice and you know I, I I'm wow it, it's just an incredible um um experience um and about things it's taught me about myself is um you know I'm th that well one I I'm really this is the largest role I think I've ever done, um, not, I'll, I'll take theater, theater out of it. I've done, you know, like I said, some two person plays where I'm on stage all the whole time, but on film and television, this is the first time I've actually, I take that back too. I have had some, other, but you know, I really felt like this is, you know, I'm carrying this role and, um, and I've got cast and crew depending on me. I mean, I, I had to be on and prepared and and focused every second of every day, but I also wanted to make sure that um, that you know that it, it, that I'm kind and open and that I meet ev everyone. I mean, one of the things that I've learned from my career, starting out young um, and at, well, young as in my early twenties, was um, I wish I knew then what I know now, and I wish I would have taken the time to get to know everybody on the crew. And this, a lot of times as an actor, um, you're, you know, you're in front of the camera, the crew and everybody involved knows you, they know your name because your name is on the screen and, and they see you and you're on the call sheet, but there's, hundreds and hundreds of people involved in the production and with, you know, just uh, amazing stories and so much to give. And, and I think that, that it's, it's easy to go through this whole process and, and, and in the end, you know, while, while you, you get, 
to know certain people that you work with daily, you know, really well, and you make these close bonds, there's just so many people. And, and so I, I'm trying hard to make the effort to, to get to know something about everybody there, because I have learned, you know, they all go on to do amazing things. And, um, as I, I see, you know, the, um, the producers and writers and, and really people that were PAs on Northern Exposure, just doing these incredible shows and incredible pieces of art and work. And, and, you know, I think, I hope that I, that's one of the things that I've learned is that, you know, I really want to, to soak it all in. And, and also uh, on um, going home, one thing that was really important to me was setting the right tone for, for we have guest stars come in every week and amazing. They were so incredible I, from Tom Skerritt, um, Charisma Carpenter. It, um, um, it just really incredible actors. Um, but because we, we shoot so fast and there just wasn't, time to sit in your trailer. And, um, and so I wanted to make sure that I set the right tone and examples, like, and always on the set before they call me, never be sitting in my trailer, never make people, I just didn't want anybody to wait. I didn't want them to ever go, Oh, she's still in her trailer, which is common. And it's not always, you know, the actor's fault. They don't even know that's, but, um, but that was important to me because I, I knew that, you know, this show was shooting on a budget and and time is money. And so I, I really made a point of, of trying to always be be there before they called me. Yeah, no, that's an amazing thing to lead by example, like you said. Yeah, and it, it makes it, um, it's amazing when you are, are doing that everybody gets it. And then, you know, it's like, oh, oh, that's the way it works here. You know, and it, it's so, I mean, and I've been on other sets where it's like, if the lead actors are sitting in their trailer and and talking on the phone to, you know, probably important calls or to their agents or managers or something, and they're sitting around waiting, well, then it tends to make everybody else go get on their phone because you know what I mean? And then you've got, 30 people on the set who are off doing something else. And it takes another 30 minutes to wrangle everybody back and, and you've wasted an hour. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. I mean, I think that's almost anywhere too, you know, like in, in business, it's, if you've been there a while, you know, it's like, you got to kind of show the new people the ropes. (laughs) Yeah. And without giving too much away, I have a fun question, but what is your favorite scene or episode? Oh boy. Okay. Well, uh, for me, I will tell you, my favorite scene is seeing, well, it's with an S, is is um, is easy. And it, it's funny because I told our our um, our producer and show creator, Dan Merchant, the same thing. Um, so I hope it doesn't sound like I'm bragging, but my favorite scene is is the last scene of each episode where I'm on the porch talking to God um, because I just... I think the way he wrote that is really great and special. I just love that it's so casual and and easy. And um, um, so I and as an actor, I I really love found the scenes challenging, but also I just I thought they were beautiful and I loved them. Um, oh, the show! There's so many. I, I just the our guest stars performances just broke my heart. Like, and, and Tom Skerritt was just incredible and lovely. And like I said, charisma, there were some scenes with charisma Carpenter and I, um, Oh, just, I just, I, I loved it. It was, you know, such a, an amazing, um, uh, experience for me because, because I got to sit there and experience their performances and, and watch them. And, and they're just beautiful. They're uh, just really beautiful. 
all everyone there. I mean, Vernon Davis was great. They, all the the guest stars were so good. No, that's amazing. And I bet like you, you almost felt like, I don't want to say that it was real, but I bet like you're on the side and you're probably watching them and you're like, this is amazing. Like almost you're watching a TV show and then you have to remember like, oh wait, I'm in this. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, it is real. I mean, that's what made it, it makes it easy when you're working with such great actors because it is real. I mean, you know, you don't have to work up tears or anything because, and, and in my case, it was more trying to hold back tears because I'm, I'm the hospice nurse who's not supposed to, to, you know, burden the people there with with my, you know, I'm supposed to be helping them. And um, so, um, yeah, it really was just a great, like, super rewarding, great experience. That's awesome. Is there anything else you want to share about the series, about your character, or just any final messages for our listeners? Oh, well... I hope that, I mean, my hope is that you'll watch all six episodes. I feel like the show grows, the characters grows, the story, everything just gets better and better and better. And um, so I really hope people will um, watch all six and, um, and that's, that's it. I mean, you know, then we'll see, see how they feel. But, you know, I'm, I think it's a special show. I hope we get to do more.